Today we check out an awesome mechanical keyboard from IKBC. I've been a huge fan of IKBC because of how much value their keyboards present, providing quality at a good price. This unit was provided by mwave.com.au for review, so a big thanks to them, and I'll leave the links in the description below. This is the IKBC MF108, which is part of their metal frame series, and yes, this also does come in a 10 keyless version, the MF87, if you don't need the numpad, and personally, it would be my choice. Opening up the box, we have a box of accessories. We have our micro USB cable, a wire keycap puller, and also a couple of extra arrow and escape keys. And it also came with a user manual, which I lost. And first impressions is that this thing is an absolute beast. The weight is so apparent straight away and really does surprise you, especially if you really haven't felt metal boards like this before. IKBC's current lineup of keyboard consists of the new Poker 2, which is their compact 60% keyboard, but then they have three tiers in which each have a 10 keyless and a full sized option. So we start from the bottom, which is the C series, then in the middle we have the F series, which are RGB, and then at the top we have the MF series with the MF87 and MF108, which are also RGB boards. The MF series is exactly the same as the lower F series, besides of course the aluminium enclosure rather than plastic. This keyboard is constructed of a full aluminium frame and a steel backplate for the key switches, and this is a full proper CNC aluminium enclosure. This is not just say an aluminium plate like on the Corsair keyboards, which by the way 99% of keyboards have a metal plate, with most being steel. And this thing just feels so solid in the hands when you first pick it up. It comes in at about 2.5 kilograms on the scales, and perhaps it doesn't sound like the biggest increase in weight, but it truly does pack a punch given that it's not overly massive in size. It's sporting a very simple rectangular design, very much like their other keyboards with rounded corners. It consists of mainly two pieces with the top and the bottom screwed together, However, on the side profile, we can also see these aluminium pieces that fit those gaps on the sides. And this of course has zero flex to it, and is just like a solid block of aluminium on your desk. I have the black version, however, it also comes in silver, which looks absolutely stunning, and would probably accentuate that it is aluminium in a better way. Here's some pictures from my friend at KB Warriors on Instagram, and it just looks stunning in my opinion. And this one being a black keyboard, it's an absolute dust magnet, which is annoying. The keycaps are backlit keycaps and are made from double shot PBT plastic, so the translucent legend is another piece of plastic, so it will never fade away. And because of this, it has the unfortunate characteristic of having the gaps for the loop legends, so while the font itself is fine looking in my opinion, it's not the cleanest because of the gaps. And as we can tell by the model name, this has 108 keys rather than 104. So we have the top right corner filled with some volume keys and a calculator key. So that's a plus and a good use of space. On the bottom we have some rubber feet, but there are no flip up feet. So we're stuck at this angle. And this is a good example of how fingerprints and marks look on the middle. But there's not as much surface area on the top, so it's fine really. One of my complaints with their other keyboards is that the cables aren't detachable, but fortunately it is here and this is using micro USB. And just like the F series, these have RGB lighting as well. The lighting is stored on board and not through software, so you'll need to use the user manual to figure everything out, but as usual, everything is controlled by the function key. First of all, I'll reset the board by holding function and R for a few seconds, and we're good to go. The arrow keys allow you to control the brightness and speed of the effect. Function and escape brings up a color palette, and space allows you to see the other colors. This is an awesome feature for the lighting, as it allows you to see all the colors and choose from them. F1 to F3 allows you to control the color by individually adjusting it through red, green, and blue, and F4 has the looped effects with RGB wave and raindrop mode. F5 has 6 reactive modes, We can also control the color for each individual key by hitting F9, and you can choose the color by going back to the color palette through escape and choosing a color from there. And if you don't want any lights on, you can press function and zero, which also has a little off symbol on the front. 
The lighting is solid and vibrant and I actually appreciate that they've gone with a black backplate instead of the white to make it a bit more stealthy. The keyboard can also be customised in other ways, again using the function key. F6 is Windows Lock, F7 switches Caps Lock and Left Control, and F8 switches Alt and Windows Key. We can also change the layout to the Vorak or Colmac, and of course QWERTY is the default. There's also this Time Machine feature which is basically a countdown which is communicated by the LEDs on the board. So it's like an alarm that you can set for whatever reason. Like for example, if you're cooking something in the oven, you can set the keyboard to alert you when you gotta go run. If you want to know more about this, I went through this with my IKBC F87 video. On this unit, I have the Cherry MX Blues, so just the clicky switch with a medium weight, but this of course comes with the other main variants from Cherry. Taking the keyboard apart requires a hex screwdriver which some may not have but you should have an allen key set somewhere. Here's the top piece of aluminium which basically has the cutouts for the keys and again this is very solid and rigid at about 7mm thick. For the bottom we have the main large piece but then we also have these two little bars on the sides secured by the same hex screws. On the bottom surface, there's this Formex branded sheet, which is just insulation, adding that bit of extra protection between the aluminium and the PCB. One problem is that the piece of plastic that holds the micro USB port is broken on mine, and I've seen it happen to others as well. And I actually saw someone do this on the Philippine Mech page on Facebook, where they filled up the space with some hot glue to hold it in place. And the good thing about hot glue is that it's very easy to remove if you want to, but is very sturdy as well. The PCB and switches are mounted onto the steel plate which is standard for most mechanical keyboards and we can tell that this is steel because it is magnetic and it's folded on both sides making it more rigid but not that it matters. The PCB itself looks clean, we of course have our SMD LEDs for that RGB lighting and the onboard memory and such and that's pretty much it. The construction is kept simple and clean which works and looks great. Overall, it's just an aluminium version of the IKBC F108 and F87, but seriously, this aluminium enclosure will take a lot of people by surprise. I know there's of course people with the other custom aluminium builds and they are accustomed to this sort of feel, but for most people, it is a real jump in what we're used to. The silver version especially looks absolutely amazing in my opinion, and I think shows off the aluminium better than the black version, but the biggest thing in my opinion is the price. In Australia on M-Wave it hovers at around the 200 Australian dollar mark. That means in the US it fluctuates from about 160 USD and higher. And you won't get something like this for this price. You won't get this amount of metal for this price, even for a cheap custom. And this just goes to show the value that IKBC represents and that's something I really do respect. If you can stretch your budget to this price then I highly definitely recommend it. There's stuff from Razer, Logitech and Corsair that honestly can't compare with this at all and can be the same price and higher. I just can't emphasize enough the value that you get especially in comparison to other retail boards on the market because this type of enclosure is usually only seen with custom builds and group buys which are limited. I think the only thing for me that I would change myself is the keycaps. It would really add to the premium look of the keyboard with a cleaner set of caps and have the lighting just be an underglow for the keys, but that's just me. I know I sound very positive in this review, but it truly is a unique product in the OEM mechanical keyboard market, and it makes me happy to see stuff like this. Thanks again to mwave.com.au for providing this keyboard for review, and I'll put the links in the description.